I'm going to reveal the five reasons why any cloud environment you're using needs Azure's Defender for Cloud. Defender is Microsoft's security solution that protects your environments and your workloads like VMs, containers, and databases. And it does this by continually assessing the security of your cloud resources, no matter if they're in Azure, AWS, GCP, or they're even hybrid or just running on-prem and it scans those things against all of the built-in policies and prioritized recommendations that align with all of those key industry and regulatory standards to help you meet all of your multi-cloud compliance, as well as security graph-based attack path queries to understand the critical risks and give contextual threat data in code, data sensitivity, identity, and more to help you prioritize all that remediation. The next reason everyone should use Defender is DevSecOps. And this is a security practice in software development, giving you insights from your development security posture all from a single location. And it'll do that by scanning your code for vulnerabilities and misconfigurations. Now I know over in AWS, for example, there's lots of code services like code commit, code build, deploy, pipeline, and there's even a security hub but you've got to pay for each of those things individually and manage them separately. Defender does it all in one place for less. Now, before I tell you the other three reasons, let me show you how easy this is to set up. Over here in the Azure portal, you want to search at the top for Defender and then click on Defender for Cloud. And on the left, you want to scroll down to the bottom and go to the environment settings. Here you'll find all of the Azure, AWS, GCP, GitHub, and DevOps environments. So now let's click at the top and add a connector for AWS. Now our connector is gonna need a name, and if you have multiple AWS accounts, you'll wanna select the management account, but if you have just a single account, pick that. Then you wanna pick the AWS regions that you need to protect, and on the Azure side, you're gonna need a subscription, resource group, and region for that connector to live. Then over in the AWS console, you wanna find your account, copy the account ID, come back here to Azure, paste, and then click next. Now there's a lot to read here on this page, so take your time, and there's even more details you can see in the docs link right up there. At a high level here, the CSPM section talks about protecting the cloud as a whole environment. And the CWP section at the bottom is for those workloads, servers, databases, and containers. And you can click on each one of the plan details, so that way you know what protections you're getting, as well as the monitoring coverage. And notice that some of these scans are agentless, while others will require the Azure Arc agent, which is used for all of that hybrid workload connectivity, so everything can talk to Azure. When you've selected everything the way that you like it, click Next. Here you can choose between default level access or least privilege access. And what this is talking about is the plan settings that you just made will need to have IAM changes in AWS so that you can do those things. If you chose default, it's gonna give it a little more leeway so that if you make any changes to your plans, you don't have to make any changes in AWS. But if you choose least privilege, it will select for only the things you selected. So which way you do it is up to you. Then to deploy it, you can choose between CloudFormation or Terraform. Once you've made that selection, scroll down and click the download button, save that file locally, and now it's time to make the connection. At the bottom here are the instructions for how to do this on the AWS side, and it's real easy, but I'll walk you through it quickly. Over in the AWS console at the top, search for cloud formation. Then you wanna mouse over right there and choose a stack. Then you wanna click over here and select a template to upload, and then pick your file. Then click next. Give it a name up here at the top, then scroll all the way to the bottom and click next. And on the options screen, we actually want all of the defaults as is, so click next and then review everything, check the box at the bottom that you know you're creating new IAM resources, and then click Submit. Once everything's deployed in AWS, go back to Azure and then review everything and click the Generate button. And that'll complete the setup on both sides and connect them together. But that gives me time to tell you about the third way Defender protects your multi-cloud environments, and that's by preventing, detecting, and responding to modern threats across your critical workloads. Now you saw this part in the deployment that we could choose agentless or ARC-based agent vulnerability scanning. This will protect your VMs, containers, and databases along with storage, app services, and more. This way you can focus in on the most critical threats first with those prioritized security alerts. 
Which brings us to number four. Defender helps save you money by optimizing your cloud security cost across multi-cloud and hybrid environments. This single instance of Defender will cover all of your cloud resources, regardless of how they're hosted or how they're accessed. You can also get access to Defender's standard tier features, which have more CSPM capabilities like security posture management, security score, regulatory compliance, file integrity monitoring, adaptive application controls, just-in-time VM access, and a whole lot more. And finally, number five, Defender gives you the power of Microsoft's cloud security expertise and innovation. Microsoft has been at this for decades, building and securing environments on-prem and in the cloud. And this gives you instant access to AI and machine learning, threat intelligence, as well as Microsoft's dedicated cloud security professionals and community. And after enough time has passed that you got all your data collected and analyzed, you can go to the security posture section over on the left. Here's where you'll find the security score for each one of your environments, and you can view all of their recommendations. And these are AWS specific as you would expect. Things like enabling multi-factor authentication for your root account, or encrypting your S3 storage buckets and more. And if you go back to the main screen and look at the inventory at the left, everything from across all of your clouds are found here. And you can even use the filters at the top to look at only those AWS environments so that you can sort and filter down to exactly what you need, like the EC2 and S3 resources. Then you can go to workload protections on the left where you'll find those VM container and databases advanced protection options which are all listed across the bottom. And every other section down across the left side has even more goodies for you to help secure things across your multi-cloud environment, like attack path analysis, security alerts, the Cloud Security Explorer, regulatory compliance, and a whole lot more. So have a look around, and then you can continue securing your cloud right over here. And happy learning.